Okay, great. Um, hello, everyone. We are now live here on Zoom and live on Facebook as well. So welcome to the latest event, part of the EU Citizens Festival. We've been having lots of events this week, and it's all with the aim of encouraging EU citizens to register to vote and vote in the local elections coming up. As you probably have heard me saying a few times, the deadline to register to vote is the 19th of April, next Monday, and the day polling day is 6th of May. So you still got some time to register, uh, but not much. And you've got still a little bit of time to find out about, about the local elections. And this is really the purpose of this event. New Europeans and Polmark, and with some contribution from other organizations, including the Young Europeans Network, we've been creating a really good positive resource that anyone can use to find out more about UK democracy, UK elections, local elections, what everything means. Uh, there's so much content, so much good content there that anyone can use. It's available um, afterwards as well. So feel free to take some notes today, but afterwards uh, you'll be able to have access from it as well. So today here with us, we've got Krisha from Polmark, uh, Polish Migrants Organize, and we've got Boromir from New Europeans. So they are going to be running the show today. This is a shared event with them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be here for, for support. I'm going to be collecting questions from anyone in the audience and on Facebook, but really it's up it's with you guys. So I'm handing over the session to you. Thank you very much, Lara. Good evening, everybody. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Open Source Election Guide session at the EU Citizens Politics Festival. A big thank you to the 3 million Young Europeans Network for organizing this festival and for having us. Uh, my name is Krzysia Balinska, and I am a drama facilitator and a community organizer. Um, I'm experienced in performance making, facilitating workshops with young people and different community groups, but also in women's rights activism and political campaigning. I joined POMOT, a Polish Migrants Organized for Change last year as a project manager, and I co-created a short stand-up comedy project called Women Act Out, exploring themes of migration and identity. POMOTS, just to introduce the organization shortly, uh, works in three ways, by providing direct support to the members of our community, by encouraging political engagement, especially through campaigns aimed to increase electoral participation, and by using art to spur social change. We strongly believe in collaborations across the organizations in the sector and in the sharing of the resources. Currently, I am coordinating the She Votes on Agwasuye campaign, which is designed by and for Polish women living in the UK, encouraging Polish women living in the UK to vote in the upcoming local elections on the 6th of May. The open source election guide, which we are about to talk to you about, is exactly part of that campaign. And hi, everyone. Um, my name is Borome. Uh, thank you very much to the 3 million and it's a privilege and um, I'm really happy to be part of the EU Politics Festival and thank you for the opportunity that you are giving us to present it to a larger platform because this is exactly what we hope the open source guide achieves is um, reaching as many people as possible. Um, so I have experience of developing, managing and delivering public programs in the charity and not nonprofit sectors. Um, I've also co-authored various projects funded by the Mayor of London. Um, I joined New Europeans UK as their communications officer after working as a marketing strategist at a London-based social impact communications agency. And my role with New Europeans is to adapt the work of the organization to the current COVID-19 context. And as we adjust to life after Brexit, New Europeans UK um, helps EU citizens to secure their rights in the UK post-Brexit. Um, plays a full and active part in their communities, offering practical support to EU citizens, including advice on one of our favorite buzzwords, the EU settlement scheme. Um, and we just became a charity. Um, so we really hope that this uh, pushes our work forward and helps us branch out beyond London, where, uh, where our efforts are mo mostly concentrated at the moment. As Lara already mentioned, throughout this session, we are here available to you to answer any questions that you might have about the open source election guide. 
So if you are with us on Zoom webinar, you can ask questions via the chat function. And if you are watching us on Facebook, uh, please use the comment section to ask questions. We will do our best to answer them. If not during the session, then afterwards. Also, a um, quick shout out uh, to everybody watching us on Facebook Live on either 3 million page or New Europeans UK page or POMOTS Polish Migrants Organized for Change uh, page. If you're watching us, um, please, please, please share this live with your friends. Share it to any of the community groups that you might be a part of. If you are a Polish citizen or a, a Lithuanian citizen, Romanian citizen, Bulgarian citizen, any, any EU nationality citizen living in the UK, we would love for you to share this live so that we can reach as many people as possible with the information about this guide, but also with the key information of this week, which is to register to vote by April 19th, midnight on Monday, April the 19th is the deadline to register to vote in the local UK elections on the 6th of May. EU nationals living in the UK do not need to be British citizens to take part in the local elections and choose their local representatives. All we need to do is to fill out a five minute online registration form and links to that form you can find all over the pages of 3 million and POMODS and Europeans UK as well. So uh, it only takes five minutes to register to vote. Do it, give yourself a chance to be heard on May the 6th. I will now open the floor to Boromir to explain about how the project election guide came about. So yeah, why are we, what are we talking to you um, about today, um, how it came about, the first question. We all vaguely, the, the, the orbit is quite small, all the organizations know each other and we know our work and we appreciate everyone's work. Um, and we were in one of many meetings at the beginning of the year. Um, and we realized that we're all working on get out to vote campaigns because these elections are so important for EU citizens. Uh, and the logic and the outcome of that meeting is we're working on the same campaigns, we're funded by the same funders, so why don't we team up some way, uh, predominantly as to not duplicate our efforts. Um, what the open source election guide with this long fancy name is, uh, in layman's term, is a PowerPoint presentation uh, on the Google Drive sharing system. Uh, the beauty of it is, is that it compiles accessible information on the postponed 2021 election cycle. Um, the purpose of using the guide is to help you understand your rights as an EU citizen voter, to explain how administrative structures in the UK work, and to empower you to use your vote and to show you that voting is important, um, and to humanise some real-life examples of EU citizens and organisations that um, we're using as case studies in the guide. We will go into more detail, of course, on each section and show you how, how, how to use the guide and contribute to the guide and get involved a little bit later on. We, uh, whilst we were working on this guide, one of the very important things to us was to uh, include a, a big social sharing aspect of it. And um, we think we achieved that. I think we think we managed to achieve that. And we would absolutely love for you to share this guide on social media. There are multiple types of elections happening on May the 6th across the UK. And we think that it is absolutely vital to keep ourselves informed on each aspect of those elections in order to feel empowered to use our vote. Uh, this is why we designed the guide in a way that each slide acts as a standalone infographic, which explains a different aspect of the current election cycle and your rights as an EU voter. Uh, sharing the infographic on social media is very simple. They are designed to be shared on Facebook and Instagram predominantly, and you can either download a single slide in a um, save it as a PNG format or take a screenshot or on your phone if you're using your phone. Uh, in a moment, we will share the screen in order to show you how the presentation looks and how to use it. Mm. Boromi already mentioned this, uh, but uh, the open source is this breathing and living a document which is free for anybody, an individual or an institution, an organization to use, to study, to suggest modifications. We want to keep improving it and for anybody to distribute in their networks during this election period. Um, 
if you wish to get a copy of the text itself in the election guide, so not in the presentation format, but just a text to use it in a different format or to translate it into another language to use to make to tailor it for the community that you're working with, we can make that text available for you as well. Um, the guide does have an interactive element to it, and we will show you how to become a contributor at the end. We chose this open source approach because we wanted to bring all partners working in this field together and to lower the barriers to collaboration. We, this is why we have co-created over 80 slides and sought feedback from over 25 community groups and organizations working in the field. Our main partners include the 3 million settled migrants organized Europia and Centrala who are currently translating the, gate, the guide into Polish. Thank you very much. I think without further ado, now it is time to show the election guide to everybody. So this is what we've been referring to, if you haven't seen it, the open source guide to the 2021 election cycles. Um, as I said, it comes in the format of a shareable um, presentation. Um, if you are watching this and would like to uh, find the guide, I'm sure it's mentioned somewhere on our posts about it, either on the New Europeans UK page, POMOC or the 3 million. But if you uh, arrive at a web page looking something like this, then you're in the right place. Um, one thing I don't want to forget to mention is clicking through the slides. Um, anything that you see here as underlying text is uh, a hyperlink link. So feel free to go in and click it. Uh, there's no worry about editing or uh, there's a different route to doing that, which we'll talk about that later uh, in becoming a contributor. So feel free to explore the guide in all its depth. Uh, one good example of showing you how the hyperlinks work is from this context, uh, context page. Uh, if you want to jump into a section straight away, as opposed to scrolling through the masses of information here, uh, you just click on any of these links and you will get taken to the place you're looking for. And of course, we're constantly updating this. So all the links are uh, relinked and everything should be taking you to the right place. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, one of the primary functions of this guide is the educational function. Um, we split it into two, the all about section and the how to section. So I'll take you through some of the highlights uh, of the all about section. Um, there is no point in me going through every slide. It goes exactly everything against uh, it being an open source document and you using the information as you wish. Um, one of the main things to mention, and forgive me for repeating it so many times, I'm sure you've heard, heard it all before, but as an EU citizen, you have the right to vote in these elections. And the festival uh, that we're part of today is conveniently placed to keep reminding you all throughout the end of the week, because by Monday, you have to have registered to vote. One of the many um, questions we received in making this as the prime audience being EU citizens is what happens to us beyond this election? We're talking about this election and we're saying how important it is, um, but what happens after? Um, as much as we know is that the UK government is working on forming bilateral agreements with separate nation states. There is no um, clean uh, sweep agreement that would cover all of the EU member states. Um, and as we receive new information, we put it on here um, that, as you can see from the screen, uh, agreements have already been made in 2019 and 2020. Um, and that is uh, agreements for um, citizens of countries like Poland to have the right to vote in future elections beyond this one and also to stand in elections. So as soon as we know more, it will be referenced here as well. Um, I will now go in to explain a little bit about the, uh, the number of competencies that we've covered in the All About section. Um, New Europeans predominantly focuses it work, its work in and around London and helping London communities. So it's very natural for us to have gone in and to start off with this. We have a member of staff seconded to the mayor's office, to the social integration team. Um, you know, it's it, one of the things that has returned as a question and as a misconception is 
you know, who takes, where do I cast my vote to change how, you know, my local, when my bins are collected, or if I'm unhappy with the noise of the neighbors. A, a common misconception is that uh, it doesn't come through the mayor of London, it comes through the London councils. And we try to explain this um, within these shareable infographics to give you more detail about the mayor of London's exact functions in understandable bite-sized chunks and to also explain to you the difference between what the Mayor of London's authority is and what the London Council's authority is, because there are so many different aspects that one can get lost. Um, a very good example of the guide coming to life is that uh, in the very first wave of feedback that we received when making the guide live last month was uh, people looking for information as to exactly what UK local election voting systems look like because we all come may come from different places and have experience voting in different EU nation states um, and have experience voting in different ways. So uh, one feedback uh, that came through was for us to give more information on this and we, uh, we you can find that here in these slides. Um, we also cover more than just London. We want this to be as accessible as possible. So we have information on the mayor of Liverpool and also on the mayor of Greater Manchester. Again, if you're looking for even more information on, uh, play, uh, on any other part of the UK that you're interested in or live in or would like to share um, information with a particularly vulnerable group uh, about their voting rights, then do let us know and we'll explain how you can get in touch uh, and ask for contributions to be made to the guide based on your needs. Um, one of the things that I love the most about this guide is the fact that we can humanize examples of people like me, you, um, Krisha, and everyone who's here in the UK um, and is an active member of the community uh, by giving case studies. Uh, for example, this is the case study of Michal, who is a former counselor. And in these short shareable slides, uh, we give a snippet of their experience of being involved in that role and what they've achieved for their community. And in another case study, we show also what the future looks like and people who are running uh, in the current cycle. Um, a memorable face for many of you watching if you're familiar with the work of the three million is Alexandra. Uh, and we'd love to get more and more uh, faces here, not only in the run up to this uh, election, but also beyond, beyond as another way to empower you to understand that you have rights and you can be a change maker in um, the local and maybe even national political landscape in the UK. I'm not going to take you through everything here, but the section continues on to cover um, council structures, the difference between boroughs and city councils, something again that I, before starting work on this, didn't know very much about as to what police and crime commissioners are uh, and how you can uh, come into contact whenever it is possible with many of these um, administrative structures. Uh, one of the most recent editions was also a, an explainer on um, the national census, which took place a few weeks ago, um, that we again realize not many people know about. Um, and with that, I will hand over to Krisha on our second part of the educational resource. Great. Thank you, Boromir. Uh, so the how to section, uh, as Boromir mentioned, in the spirit of empowering and uh, creating change makers, we've included a how to section, which essentially includes crucial information and very practical step-by-step uh, -step instructions on several processes that happen as part of the current election cycle. And some of the examples include how to register for a postal vote. Um, voting by post is by far the safest option in the pandemic. And we do, do recommend that you do that. If you are living in England or Wales, there is still a little time left to apply for a postal vote. The application for a postal vote needs to reach your local electoral office by the 20th of April. Um, we have also included an, uh, in, uh, instructions on how to fill in and return your ballot paper. Now, that might seem like a really basic thing to be talking about, 
Uh, however, we feel like with the, um, with the current circumstances, with the pandemic, there are a lot of people choosing to vote by post who wouldn't have normally cho chosen the option. So there might be a lot of people in this election who will be voting by post for the first time. Um, knowing from um, experience on working on another electoral campaign before the Polish presidential election in May 2020, uh, where voting by post was the only option and the circumstances were quite difficult and rushed. Um, there was actually a significant, a significant number of votes that were incorrectly cast and therefore were invalid. So if you're someone who is about to vote by post for the first time, do spend a minute reading our guide, reading the instructions carefully to make sure that the vote you cast counts. Um, we have also included some instructions on how to run for a councillor. As Boromir already explained, EU nationals living in the UK are eligible to become the leaders of their local communities and to be um, engaging with the local authorities and to be running for offices of councillors. Um, we at POMOS especially champion the uh, presence of women and uh, women taking the positions of leadership in their communities. So we really think that this is a fantastic opportunity to do that and engage with the local community and the local issues and the local democracy. Um, we are also talking a little bit about how to stand for a political party. Now, voting and joining a political party are definitely not the only means of engaging with democracy but they are one of the most traditional ways of democratic participation and democracy as we all know what works best when we all take part in it uh, so if there is a candidate that you support or a political party that you support uh, this local elections is a fantastic opportunity to get involved with them, uh, to look up how to get involved with their campaign. Mm. Um, as it's already been mentioned by Boromir, the slides are hyperlinked to all the external sites where all the necessary processes need to happen and where uh, you can download various forms such as the vote or, um, postal uh, vote application. Um, we have also decided to include some information on non-traditional ways of political participation that is self-organizing. Because we believe that if you join a Facebook group or start your own group that is dedicated to a cause that you care about or a local issue that is affecting you, that is as much of a political act as joining the political party itself. And if you indulge me for another minute or two, we have included some of our favorite examples of self-organizing. So let me just quickly uh, talk to you about uh, Polonia Express, because Polonia Express is a fantastic group that uh, came to existence around the uh, presidential election, Polish presidential election in May 2020. Uh, <clears throat> It was uh, made of um, Polish nationals who responded to the fact that there was so little time to deliver voting ballots uh, to the consulate and to the embassy on time that they formed a, uh, an impromptu courier company that ended up delivering over 2000 votes to the Polish embassy and consulate all over the UK by forming over 30 pickup points for uh, the people to uh, pick up and deliver their votes. Um, the limitation uh, given by the consulate at the time was that it was only Royal Mail or a private courier company that could deliver ballot papers to the consulate. And uh, completely spontaneously, they came together on Facebook. They uh, created a logo, they created a network of volunteers and helped out with the democratic process. Um, another example of self-organizing is uh, Jewuche London which is a London branch of a feminist collective which initially formed in Poland in 2016 in response to the near total abortion ban in Poland. And it has since then organized protest actions and talks focused on reproductive justice in Poland. And the Facebook group, which counts over 2000 members at the moment, uh, is still a very much um, a site that where most of the organization happens. Some other functions about the election guide that we'd like to talk to you about include event calendar, 
which lists all the events that happened during all the campaigns of all the partners involved. Um, some information about current active campaigns, uh, which are Our Home, Our Vote, a uh, cross-party campaign by the three million, and also the uh, campaign, the six-month campaign to engage young EU national voters, 18 to 30 year olds, to take part in the local elections. Um, promote the migrant vote by migrants organize. Uh, reminder that in Scotland and Wales, all legally resident foreign nationals can vote in local elections, so not just EU nationals. And she votes on our Gwosuya campaign by Polish Migrants Organised for Change. I have just unmuted myself. Um, and as we promised, uh, we want to talk to you about, of course, um, how you can contribute to this guide, how you can tell us about your active campaign, how you can tell us about your individual or organisational case study, or if you feel like something's missing. Uh, that is the point. Please tell us what's missing, um, because that's how we can get the most out of sharing um, information exchange. Um, so let me start off first with how you can become a contributor to this um, election guide or give us a nudge towards finding, finding something that's missing. And it doesn't at all take more than about one minute, and I'll show you right now. Um, so when you're uh, at the very beginning of this guide, take you back to the top, um, you will see on slide three, uh, and these are slides that don't get changed with our updates. So it will remain slide three, no matter when you click on here, that um, if you want to become a contributor, there's a hyperlink. And again, as we mentioned a couple of times, feel free to click through. I've already opened it to show you that this link will take you to our survey function. Um, all you have to do is let us know what topic um, you'd like to see covered in the open source guide. It can be as simple as, um, you know, a one sentence answer, but we also value very much letting us know exactly what you feel like is missing and why it might be helpful to the community you work with or the, to the community you feel like we haven't covered yet. So feel free to go in as much detail as you'd like. It's very helpful to us when we go back in and look at the um, suggestions. Um, if you would like to be contacted, um, so far everyone who has suggested has left uh, a name and an email address for us to just get in touch with them, thank them um, and let them know that the slides are now live with the information that they've requested. You just insert that here and that is it. Um, what we uh, worked out a system uh, uh, to collect edits every fortnight um, leading us to the election and to update the document um, as soon as we get round to covering everything that's been sent to us. Um, so it's always useful when you reach the end of the form to see when the next round of updates to the guide are due. Um, but we will always be in touch with you before that if you let us know what your email is. So that is uh, how you can submit a topic for consideration. Uh, and again, to highlight something that you feel like is missing. The final function of um, the guide is an accompanying empowerment um, campaign. And just to have a little bit of fun um, in these tough times and to ask you uh, about your own voice and to hear why you are voting. Um, to give you a head start um, and to give you things to play around with on social media, um, our wonderful designer has created a selection of anything you can think of as to why vote. So you can just go in and, and, and copy one of these. But of course, uh, this is jokes aside. Um, we have some very great responses that have come through um, so far in the um, London mayoral debate that we held with Pomog uh, and Polonia Express last month. Uh, we managed to get all um, attendees to submit their own reasons as to why they're voting. Um, but, you know, uh, we're looking for this to come from anyone. Um, when you 
when you click through um, on submitting your response, again, I've opened it up for you, you will see this page. You're, you're in the right place if you're here. And we're interested in hearing from you in any way that you find comfortable. You can send us an audio recording of why you're voting, you can send us a video recording, or you can just answer in text form. Um, and then, of course, if you're happy to, we'll be uh, more than happy to include your answer in this bank of reasons as to why people are voting. And just to check if I have anything else on my list, yes. Um, I suppose it's important to say that um, this is not something that will disappear as a resource um, as soon as the elections come. Um, in fact, this will remain there for as long as Google decides to have Google Slides as a function. Um, what we, in talks in recent weeks, we found out that it's, it's, it's something that could be very useful to people um, in sixth form or college education, as well as um, you know, not to make it exclusive to EU citizens. Because if I return back to the time when I was studying, um, if I had something like this, I would have <laughs> made much better voter decisions and would have just known so much more about the, the system that I live in. So uh, this won't go anywhere. You'll be able to find it beyond the elections. Um, we'll continue updating it up to the elections and then of course um, re reconvene to see how we can prolong its life in different ways. But if you're here listening or are watching a recording of this video or have stumbled across the resource and think that it will be of use to anyone as Krisha said, please, please, please share it on and spread the word about it, because this is the way that we see it continuing in its life to the fullest. Um, there is a question in the q and I don't know if you've seen it, is there going to be a section on the Scottish parliamentary elections that will take place also on the 6th of May? Yes, there will be, is the short answer. Uh, especially now that this uh, question now has been asked, but yes, there will be a section on the Scottish parliamentary election and probably on the, uh, on the Welsh uh, parliamentary election as well. Yeah. We've seen a few campaigns also mention um, the fact that um, you can vote as a new citizen in Scotland. That has been reflected in some active campaigns, uh, but I am very impressed by the person who decided to bypass the submission form and just let us have it right now and thank you so much yes we will make a note of that although it would be uh, lovely to have you uh, contact us via the submission form as well so then we can ask if you'd like to be in touch in the future and so on and so forth and share your personal uh, uh, view on why you are voting in the guide as well shall, shall we do a few like just quick fire questions I'm also on TikTok Live, by the way, so um, as people are watching us here. Um, one question that always comes up is, do you have to have a national insurance number to register to vote? Well, the answer is that it's better to have one, I suppose. But uh, you, no, you don't have to have a national insurance number. It's a little bit easier to fill in the registration process, but if you do not have the national insurance number, there is still an option for you to register to vote. Yeah. And as it says right there, uh, just so we, we say it out loud for people that are seeing it in the small screen, uh, how old do you have to be to register and vote in the UK? 18 or over on the day of the elections. Yeah. In England, um, but 16 in Scotland and in Wales. Um, I have one, one other question that... Um, I think it's very important to highlight is if you're a student, you can vote in the local elections, both in your term time address and at home, because they're considered to be different elections. Um, I, when I first moved to the UK, I, I didn't know that and I only voted in one when I could have voted in more than one local election. Yes, you can vote in more than one. So, um, and logistically, you'd, you'd have to vote in one of them by post probably or by proxy. Uh, but yeah, it is possible. And also, you don't have to be a student to do that. So anybody who has more than, uh, who has two addresses, so people who have 
two addresses for work or other reasons can do that as well. Cool. Um, so I think you, Rena, I think your question has been answered, um, unless you've got another one. Let me check Facebook again. Thank you for the question. I'm only able to see it now when I stop screen sharing. Yeah, it's good to do two things at the same time. Okay, uh, yeah, no more questions on TikTok, just some claps there for us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is there anything else that you guys uh, want to share with us? Do you want to share the link uh, to the open source guide on the chat? So you really yes. Yeah, let me do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you, Boromir, for doing the honours. I realised that it might have been good to be able to share that at the beginning, but okay, let me just put that into the chat and we will post it panelists and attendees. I just wanted to say whilst I'm sharing very slowly with you, making sure I've got the right link from my many open tabs, um, that if, uh, you know, use the opportunity um, here with the young Europeans to say that any anyone who's watching and, you know, reflects into that identity as a young European, um, we're particularly interested also in hearing your views on, on this resource. Uh, and not only that, but um, just generally about how we work as organizations and how we can respond more and more to your own needs. So please get in touch, get in touch about the resource, get in touch about what we do, get in touch about opportunities, or just say hello. I think that came through as a link, hopefully, to panelists and attendees. Cool. Thank you all so much for sharing that with us. Um, I, guess, I hope that it has been helpful for more of our audience and anyone watching in the, the three, four different platforms that we're sharing this on right now and future recordings can learn more about their local areas, their local communities, and how to be an active citizen where they live. Because as Boris May said as well, there's um, there's so much to learn, no, no matter where you're from, there's always so much to learn about local democracy, and this is very, very helpful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Right, take care. Have thank a good you. Evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.